is one of the finest crucifers I have ever seen. That's excellent work there. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll read Acts chapter 8, beginning in verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. 
This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came, came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all of the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Psalm 66, verses 1 through 8, will be prayed responsively by the whole verse. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing praises to the honor of his name. Make his praise to be glorious. For all the world shall worship you, sing to you, and praise your name. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot. Therefore, in him let us rejoice. Bless our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our soul in life and does not allow our feet to slip. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be. The world without end. Amen. A reading from 1st John chapter 3 beginning at the 18th verse love one another little children let us not love in word or talk but in deed and in truth by this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him for whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before the Lord. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, 
that we believe in the name of Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Yet you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. pray with me. Lord, I thank you for the fact that you have called us to be your children. And in doing that, you've also called us to be your ambassadors, to go out into all the world and reconcile those who are lost, those who are hurting. Lord, reconciling them to you. Lord, I pray that you would fill us with your spirit to do this. You would strengthen us that we may walk in your spirit as children of light we may bring your truth to the entire world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. If you'd like to follow along, please turn in your Bibles to, I think it was page 917. Was that right? Acts chapter 8. I'm trying to remember what it was up there because I don't have it here. <laughs> I think it's not. Uh, chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Acts chapter 8, 26 through 40. So about nine years ago, I joined the army, and when I did that, I uh, was terrified, and I went to basic training, and one of the first things I learned that will always stick with me is that uh, this wonderful, wonderful saying, which is, lead, follow, or get out of the way. 
And I, it'll always stick with me that I either need to lead in this life, <clears throat> follow, or get out of the way. So I need to either lead because I know what I'm doing, and I need to help my soldiers, uh, help our congregation, uh, help people individually to get closer to the goals that they have for themselves, the goals that God has for them, right? Or I need to follow and follow the Holy Spirit because he knows better, and he knows uh, how to help people the best, right? So I follow his lead in all that, help them get to the gospel, help them to get saved and to, to follow after him. The other thing is sometimes I need to get out of the way, and I think that's important for all of us to remember is because we're sinful, because we're broken, because we carry around this body of death, we need the Holy Spirit to guide us. And sometimes we need to get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit do his work, which sometimes that means just letting them read the Bible for themselves, letting them uh, be led by the Spirit instead of me trying to coax them or prod them or make them feel guilty enough to show up at church. Because that can sometimes be the pastoral de default is guilt people, right? So I will make you do this, right? Uh, so, but as a Christian, there is no place for bystanders, fans, spectators in the kingdom of God. There is no place to sit by and be entertained. And in our world today, a lot of us want to be entertained. We have m wonderful movies out there that entertain us all week long, TV shows. We are an entertainment generation, although I, I would, I would uh, dare to say that the Roman civilization with the Colosseums were also very interested in being entertained. So I don't think it's just us. I think it's a human condition that we want to be entertained. We want to sit back and be served. We want to enjoy the show. And so there is no room for that in the kingdom of God. We have to be willing to lead, follow, or get out of the way. Father Henry has a wonderful saying, we need to be a fully functioning embassy for the kingdom of God. That means each one of us needs to be trained up to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God. From beginning to end, the Christian life is a call to active, immediate, deliberate obedience and trust in the command of God and his representatives. So when the angel says go, as long as, an as, long as it's an angel from God, you go. When the Holy Spirit says go, you go, right? When the pastor says go, as long as it's in accordance with God's word, may, you might go, right? Sometimes. <laughs> Maybe. So, I digress. So, Noah, Abraham, um, think about David, uh, Jacob, Isaac, all of these people in the Old Testament, the patriarchs, Isaiah, the prophet, right? I'm a man of unclean lips, he says. All of these prophets, all of these patriarchs, can you imagine if they said, oh, Lord, not today. Not today. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Or, no, Lord, I don't, I don't want to move my family to a land I do not know. I'm really comfortable here in Haran. I think I'll just stay here, raise my family, you know, move from one nicer house to a little bit nicer house, from one nice car to a little bit nicer car. You know what I mean? It's really easy to just kind of get in the motions, to pantomime the people around you, to just kind of fit into the culture, not cause too much trouble. Just do what the culture around you is doing. Can you imagine if they'd done that, if Abraham had just stayed there and not gone when he was called to go? Or Jacob or Isaac? Or if any of the other patriarchs or prophets had just said, no, I think I'll just wait. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. If you're not willing to go now, who's to say you're going to go later? If God calls you now, you need to go now. 1 John 3.18 was our reading from the New Testament. Focuses on the two, these two words as action and truth, or deeds and truth. We're not supposed to just love with words, but deeds and truth. When we go out into the world, we tell people the gospel. We tell them the truth, that they are a fallen, broken people, that they are sinful, and that they are dead in their trespasses and sins. And without Jesus Christ, there is no hope for them. Psalm 16, or 66, which was our psalm reading, Psalm 66, 1 through 8, is all about shouting for joy and calling mankind to see the awesome works of God. What is the greatest work of God? It's not parting seas. It's not raining down manna from heaven. It is taking our broken, sinful hearts, our hearts of stone, 
making them hearts of flesh. That is the true work of God. That is the greatest work of God. And that is what we preach. That is what we proclaim. That is what we shout, is that God is here and that he wants to change our hearts. I mean, parting a sea is pretty awesome, but getting me to actually do what he wants me to do, that's even more impressive. The fact that I'm wearing this stole standing in this pulpit is pretty darn impressive. John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. What's the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets, or as Father Henry says in the Texas translation, hangs all the law and the prophets. King James? Okay, sorry, the King James translation, which Texans, I guess Texans appreciate that as their, it's also, anyways, I digress. Okay, continuing on. So, it's easy for us to stand up in a pulpit and say, if you really love people, you'll tell them the gospel. But here's another way of looking at it. How much would you have to hate someone to not tell them the gospel? How much would you have to hate someone to not share with them the gift of eternal life? If you know that people are dying and going to hell and not knowing Jesus Christ, if you know people have no other hope, there's no other name given among men by which we shall be saved, if you know that, how much do you have to hate them not to tell them the gospel? Point two, visualize your target. So let me turn to our scriptures for this. Now an angel of the Lord, verse 26, sorry, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And then Philip said, no, I'll just wait. (laughs) No, Lord, later. No, he goes, he, he rises and he goes. This is a desert place, period. I love that. This is a desert place. Verse 27, and he rose and went And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. And so a strange place to go and evangelize, right? Go down to the desert. I'll tell y'all, when I was looking at coming here to Midland, and all my buddies said to me, you know, there's no water there. And if you find water, you can't drink it. You know, I come from the land of like a thousand lakes, okay? So there is more water than, there's more water than anywhere else in the world, really, like fresh water, right? Lake Superior, Michigan. And they told me to come to a desert place. And, um, and I'm so happy to be here. And it is amazing to see the gospel here. It's amazing to see the people who have such a huge heart to share the gospel. And so I'll just leave it at that. Anyways, moving on. He went to a desert place to meet with this Ethiopian eunuch. Continuing on, so this Ethiopian eunuch, he was a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, and he had charge of all of her treasure. This guy's a big deal. I mean, he literally is in charge of all of the queen's money. Now, if you, get, if you give somebody charge of your money, you have to really trust them, right? This guy is not just anybody, and he probably has a really fancy chariot, too. And so... He's riding, uh, he's riding back after visiting Jerusalem, and so he's a Gentile. He can't go into the temple, but he's there to worship God. He's what we call a God-fearer in the Old Testament. He's a Gentile who's not Jewish, but he knows that the Jewish God is the true God. And so he goes to Jerusalem to worship, and he's riding back, and he's reading from the prophet Isaiah, which means he also had a lot of money himself or a lot of influence because he has the ability to actually read a scroll and to have a scroll back then, that's a big deal. Most people didn't walk around with scrolls. Those are very, very you know, handwritten, very expensive. Not everybody had those. And so he's reading from the prophet Isaiah, verse 29, and the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. And so Philip is led by this angel first who says go, and now the Holy Spirit is saying go. So it's pretty obvious it's time to go. And so he comes up to this chariot, and what I love about this is it says, go over there and join this chariot. And, and join, it's kind of like a cleave, grab onto. And so one of the cool 
things about like, I think it's NIV or NI, NLT or something, some of those translation. It literally has the idea of overcoming the chariot. So he's like racing off, trying to catch the chariot, like, hey, stop, stop, I have to tell you something. So he's, he's literally chasing after uh, this chariot to flag him down and to get him to stop because he hears him reading Isaiah the prophet and the Holy Spirit just told him to go and grab onto this chariot. So it's kind of like today, if there's a millionaire political guy driving in a limo, running up and smack in the limo saying, hey, let me come in. I got to share something with you. But he lets him in. It's amazing. So, so it says, verse 30, so Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? And the, the eunuch says to him, how can I unless someone guides me? And the eunuch invites Philip to go, come up and sit with him. And now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep that was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opens not his mouth. I'm going to stop right there. Um, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is written 700 years before Jesus. Some people call Isaiah the fifth gospel, which is kind of a cool way to describe it. Because if you read the gospel well, the book of Isaiah, the gospel of Isaiah, you will see within those chapters, there's, I believe, 66 chapters, which is kind of cool too. I mean, how many books are there in the Bible? 66. It's, it's, it's kind of a cool book for that reason. If you go through the entire book, you will see the gospel from beginning to end. God will reveal himself in the person of Jesus Christ through these prophets 700 years ago. And the wonderful thing is the Dead Sea Scrolls were found 200 years, dated 200 years before Christ was born and they found those scrolls. These things have not been tampered with. This Old Testament is reliable. It is the Word of God. It doesn't change. The world around us changes, but the Word of God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Verse 33, in his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his, this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And so Jesus humiliates himself. He humbles himself to become a servant, to literally be stripped down, almost naked, hung on a cross, and die for the sins of the world. Now that's humiliation. The king of the universe dies as a man, as a criminal on a cross for us. And who can speak of his generation? One of the important things about this, Jesus didn't come to have a family. You know, Da Vinci Code nonsense tells us, oh, maybe he, you know, got married to Mary and uh, Mary Magdalene and had kids with her and stuff, kind of crazy nonsense. That's not what he came to do. Jesus Christ came to die for the sins of the world, to raise up disciples, to establish his church. He did not come to have physical children, but he has so many spiritual children, so many spiritual children. And that's what this is getting at. This eunuch, right? He's been made a eunuch, which means... I think y'all know what that means, right? Yeah. So this guy, he can't have kids, right? He is. And so <laughs> he can work for this queen. He can do all these things. He is completely dedicated to serving her as his queen. And so who can speak of his generation? Another cool thing about this is if you read through Isaiah, Isaiah is the prophet of the Gentiles. Isaiah is the one that says, all of these Gentiles will come in. All the nations will come in to the kingdom of God. The Jewish people might have had ethnocentrism, meaning they focused primarily on the ethnic identity of being children of Abraham, right? There is none of that in the true kingdom of God. The true kingdom of God is made up of Gentiles. So visualizing your target and keeping your sight picture, when you line up your sights on a person to get them into the kingdom of God, don't take your sights off that person. I know sometimes it can be really awkward and, and weird because you walk up to somebody and you tell them about Jesus and you tell them about Jesus again. And the, poor, and the guy's like, this guy, he just keeps telling me about Jesus. All he wants to talk about is Jesus. But guys, that is the greatest gift we can give to them. The greatest commandment is to share the gospel so that they can get saved. They can come to know Jesus. Subpoint: take confidence. God has already begun the work with the Holy Spirit in his provenient grace. In the Arminian uh, the theological tradition, we call it provenient grace, the grace that is sent out by God to draw people to himself. In the Calvinistic tradition, they call that irresistible grace. 
but we would say God is leading all people to himself. He is drawing all people to himself. When he is raised up on the cross, he will draw all people to himself. And so seeing people as God sees them is the secret to crippling racism. It's the, it's the secret to crippling um, all of the division we see in our world today, whether that's socioeconomic status or whatever divides us. The secret to destroying those things that divide us is seeing people the way God sees them. If we could just see people with the love that God has for them, all those things, all those things that are such a barrier in our society of the day that weigh us down would not be a problem if we could just love and see people the way God sees them. Third point, overtake the chariot. There are many chariots in the way of reaching your target. But, but what God has called you to do, he will equip you for. John 14, 16, we have to trust in the Holy Spirit. God is already guiding them, directing them, bringing them to himself. And all we have to do is to come, come alongside and help them and guide them. One of the important things is, remember, the Mormons read this. The, the you know, Jehovah Witnesses read this. Christian science people read this. Lots of people are reading this book. But are they reading it with apostolic doctrine? Are they reading it as the apostles read it? I don't think so. That's why when you see somebody reading the Bible, you can't just say, oh, great, you can understand that on your own. Just go read that on your own. No, you help them. We have so many resources today. We have, you know, the Holy Spirit for one. We have the Bible we have pastors, commentaries, books, classes, websites, whatever you need. God, in his, in his grace, has equipped us so that we can help people learn the faith. Not the faith of the Mormons, not the faith of any other heretical group, but to actually know this book the way the early church read it. The fourth point, trust the Holy Spirit and God's word to lead as you guide. So just following along, letting the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit's already done. I was telling the youth this morning in, in our catechism class, when you're learning and as you're growing, you share that with other people. And you can't expect people to just know Jesus. You can't expect people to just accept Jesus. You can't necessarily reason someone into the kingdom of God if the Holy Spirit isn't involved. That's why if you're going to be leading someone to Christ, you need to pray first. You need to ask the Holy Spirit to draw them first. And my conclusion is, reap the harvest and keep going. Reap the harvest and keep going. Baptism is an instrument to graft believers and their children into Christ's body, the church. And we are here to equip you for your ministry, to reach the lost for Christ. I mean, obviously, we're up here wearing collars, investments, and everything else, but we cannot save the world all by ourselves. The clergy are not the primary missionaries. You are. You are to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You are to go into all the world, teach people this book. The wonderful thing about the Old Testament and the New Testament is it is one book. If you can show people Christ in the Old Testament, even from Genesis, Christ is already appearing in Genesis, all the way through to the New Testament— in book of Revelation, if we can help people to see this one book as the word of God, if we can draw people to God through the work of the Holy Spirit and good biblical teaching, we can draw so many people to Christ. Baptism is an instrument to graft believers and their children into Christ's body. We don't just stop, right? We reap the harvest and keep going. We should have a holy discontent. My final thing I'm going to leave with you is a holy discontent. I'm not going to be content until I see every seat in this place filled and every, you know, if we have another campus and we grow this church and we help other churches grow in the community and we bring people into the kingdom of God, I will not be content until I see that. There's a lot of things you've got to be content with in this world. Sometimes it's your, you know, your marriage. Sometimes it's, I'm just kidding. No, I'm very, very, no, no. You have to be content in some areas in life. But one thing you cannot be content with is the number of people that got saved, the number of people sitting in the seats, the number of people that are going into the community and sharing their faith. 
there should always be a growth. There should always be a multiplying community. Just as Philip went, as the Holy Spirit called him, I'm encouraging y'all, I'm, I'm calling you to go out in faith in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit to share the gospel and to draw all people to Christ. So let us pray. Lord, I thank you for your truth. Thank you for your gospel. Thank you for the fact that we have your word. We have your Holy Spirit. We have your power. Lord, if we would just draw on you, if we would just share this truth with our neighbors, that they might be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Lord, I pray that you would draw us more and more to yourself, that we might draw others to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, we stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, <clears throat> God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in joy and hope, let us pray to the Father. That our risen Savior may fill us with all, fill us all with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray to the Father. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. We pray to the Father. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. We pray to the Father. that he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. We pray to the Father. Lord, that by his power, war and famine may cease through all the world. We pray to the Father. Lord, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them, especially Kevin Carr, Barbara Chandler, Don Craig, Glenda Cumbus, Jane Fortner, Dixie Hakton, Carol Custer McDonald, Father Henry, the family of DJ Rice, Richard, Rita Rivas, Russ Sarkis, Stephen Starr, Mary Ellen Wales, the family of Gil Whitaker, Max Wright, and the dying to comfort and strengthen them are we pray to the Father, Lord, hear our prayer, that according to your promises, Deidre Rice, Gil Whitaker, Richard Lannon, and all those who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. We pray to the Father, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people so that we may bear fruitful witness to the resurrection. We pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that, 
as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. All righty, those celebrating birthdays this week. Thank you, Father Steve, for your sermon, by the way. Thank you very much. Those celebrating birthdays this week are Elizabeth Davis. Hey, hey, you must be turning 29. Almost, almost. Uh, John James, Sarah Fry, Russ Sarkis, Jack Van Cleve, Ryan Roberts, Don Brown, and Armetta Conlon. Hey, hey, how about that? My mother-in-law. You know, when my mother-in-law uh, chose to be baptized, uh, I called the bishop and said, it's going to take a real man to baptize this woman. <laughs> so you got to come out and do it. <laughs> it was great. It was great. It was a wonderful day. Let us pray for birthday blessings for all of these people. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And those celebrating wedding anniversaries this week are John and Lana Cooper, Ryan and Ashley Roberts, Bill and Rachel Harlow, and the Qualias as well. Let us pray an anniversary blessing for them. O oh God, you have so blessed the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessings upon these, your servants, that their lives together may continue to reflect your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rip. Good morning. I've got a, a lot of announcements this morning. We're going to go through them as quickly as possible. And actually, there's like people that are coming to help, like a lot of announcements. You're, so here we go. So today, if you are a guest, we are really, really glad you're here. We would love for you to fill out the welcome card that's in the seat right in front of you. Put it in the offering plate in the back. We'd love to be able to catch up with you, get to know your name, and see if there's anything we can do for you. Um, we would love to get that. Um, also, if you see out, when, as soon as you walk out, there's going to be a table, you've got a chance for us. We're going to do a baseball game on May the 15th. Go buy a ticket. We're going to go have a picnic. It'll be fun. There it is right there, food, fellowship, and fireworks. Um, go at $10 a person, great, great time. So please go buy a ticket. We still have some spots left for that. Tonight, 
at 6.30 is the healing prayer service. It's a, it'll be a great service, and Diane Edwards is going to be sharing her story. Um, so go to that tonight if you get an opportunity. It really will be great. And then we're just getting to Monday. So there's a lot of things going on. Monday morning, um, 9.30, there's Mom Gets a Break, but also we begin, we pray in here at 9.30. If you would like to come be a part of a prayer time at 9.30, and then at 10 o'clock, we have a study of prayer, the way of life, in the sanctuary, and it'll begin at 10 o'clock. And then tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, there will be the career coaching classes. If you would like to be involved, it's not too late. You can still be involved in that and serve. Um, get a hold of Joe Cumbus, and he can tell you where they have needs, but that will begin tomorrow. And then Tuesday morning at 6.30 is the men's breakfast, weekly breakfast series. is 33 series, Authentic Manhood. And if you'd like to be a part of that, we would love for you to be there. It really is a great study. If it doesn't work for you at that time, grab me and let me know. I, we will facilitate however we need to. I'd love for all of our men to go through that. It's really, really a great series. Um, and then on Wednesday, we have the family dinner at 545, rooted at 545, and then 630, we have our adult classes. Um, and then Saturday, next Saturday, is the men's breakfast, and it will be on um, how to be a man, which is good because it's a men's breakfast. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it would be kind of strange. So that is all I have. I know Stephen's got some stuff that he would like to announce and whoever else. There may be lots of people. So that's all I got, though. So we've been doing a lot of work with The Attic, uh, which is a group led by Matt Waller. And Matt Waller has worked with The Attic for the last year and a half. They've served over like 500 families. So they're serving like a family a day. And these are foster kids, um, adoption. So it's, it's the foster network is what they call themselves, the Attic Foster Network. And so one of the things that they're doing to uh, connect people and find people to babysit, one of the weird things about the uh, foster system is you can actually babysit a person or a foster kid in your home, but if you go to their home to babysit the kid, you actually have to like have, um, you have to become like a frequent visitor or something like that with some training and everything before you can actually go babysit at the foster kid's house where they live. So it's kind of a loophole sort of kind of where they can bring the foster kid to your house. And, and so that's kind of a cool way of serving. Um, if you're interested in fostering, if you're interested in adopting, um, this, this concert that's going on, um, which is Mark Schultz uh, at the um, Grace Christian Fellowship, uh, is for people that are really interested in helping, getting involved, volunteering with foster care and adoption. And like I said, um, you, you don't have to adopt, you don't have to foster, but if you just want to help some way to get involved with this, there's only like eight, uh, 100 uh, spaces. So you, if you're going to register, um, the registration is really for like 100 people who really want to get involved. And you can meet Mark Schultz after, uh, after the concert too. There's like, a core, like 25 people can go and see him with an extra charge or something like that. So Anyways, that's the one thing. The other thing I wanted to make an announcement about is there's a pro-life event going on, which I'd really encourage you to go to. There is a flyer on the door back there, and um, Christ Church Anglican is all about pro-life, about um, keeping uh, children and raising them. So if, uh, if you want to be part of that, I would encourage you to uh, join that event. So that's all I got. One of the most powerful ministries of this church uh, over decades has been the taking of communion, home Eucharistic ministry to those who cannot be here. COVID, of course, interrupted that, and we are thrilled to say that we are getting underway again this month with dozens of uh, volunteers and recipients uh, to share uh, the fellowship meal for those in homes who cannot come uh, to services for whatever reason. So we're going to begin blessing and sending out uh, at each of our services, uh, the home uh, Eucharistic ministers. If you see Debbie Scarber, thank her for her good work on coordinating this wonderful ministry. If you would like to serve, great. If you know of somebody who might want to receive, let Debbie know. Thank you so much. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
many of us are going through passages and seasons of life. Sarah and Ethan in the praise ensemble are graduating or have graduated. Nobody knows. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let us uh, offer this Eucharist in thanksgiving for their accomplishment and ministry for all of those who work so hard for the promotion of the gospel and life and love of Christ. What's that? Oh, okay. I can't hear. Okay, I can't hear you, but this is good. <laughs> Is the Father with us? Yes. Is Christ among us? Yes. Is the Spirit here? Yes. This is our God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are His people. We are indeed. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. But chiefly, are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord? For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and who has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising life to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. be seated. Almighty God, we thank you for giving up your Son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing Spirit on us and upon these gifts as we remember him in the way he commanded through this bread and this wine. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. His body was broken for us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. Amen. Jesus is Lord. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. 
of Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us, let us keep, keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. 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 These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life, <laughs> life to others. Lights, give light to the world. Give us hear him and hope is set before us. Be free. Praise your name. Praise our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together for Lucia and Mike as they take communion to Lee Harley. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to love and to live together as an extended family in peace. We pray your blessings and inspiration for Lucia and Mike and that your spirit would inspire and heal and guide Lee Harley. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has claimed us as his own. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ, the Son of righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. peace, be bold, proclaim the love of God in Christ. Glory, thanks, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah.